All right. Okay, so I'm, I'm still Tristan Ito from this morning. Same name, same guy. Uh, I'm still working for uh, Cozy Cloud. I don't think I've been fired in, fired in the meantime. Um, so I want to uh, discuss the personal cloud, which is great because it goes with the, the previous presentation uh, about uh, Labric uh, Internet, which I was just tweeting about. Um, so as you know, our data uh, is uh, currently stored in silos. So sometimes I get questions, what is a silo you know, for, for people who didn't live next to a farm? So yesterday I was riding my motorcycle and I came to uh, these four silos. So I stopped my motorcycle and took the picture so that everybody sees these four silos uh, here. Uh, that's Google, Amazon, Facebook, uh, and Apple, respectively. <laughs> the GAFAs. Um, the, the issue is uh, these silos store data. Well, these, these ones, they actually store uh, seeds and grain and stuff like that. But uh, metaphorically, uh, silos store our data. Um, and they process it. it there is a, an interesting contrast between what the uh, free software movement and even the personal computing movement wanted to do at the beginning, which is to own a computer that we would be able to control. Um, and the, the, the computer was so bare bones initially that you indeed had to write your own software to do whatever you wanted to do with the hardware. Because basically you had a language and a manual, and that was it. So you were pretty sure that you, everything that you were doing was under your control, well, provided that you know what you're doing, except nobody really knew what they were doing at the time because we were all learning. Um, but soon we were really in control. We were writing the software that was handling the data. It was stored locally and we had complete control over hardware, software, and data. And if you fast forward to today, which is roughly um, 30 years later, we have lost control about pretty much everything. We do a lot more because somebody does it for us, but a lot is done to our data because we don't control it um, anymore. Um, I don't know where my data is stored. They say it's in the cloud, which is basically someone else's computer. Um, I don't control the software that is run there. Um, and I don't know what's happening to my data. Some of it is used to be useful to me, and the rest is used for example, uh, targeted advertising, profiling me. Um, and of course, because there are huge companies that want to hold as much data as they can, because it's powerful and they monetize it, they do not allow me to move easily from one silo to the other. And they fight. And they fight. For example, uh, Google bought uh, the Nest hardware company. And the data that is produced with the Nest uh, hardware is my data, right? It's, it's something that measures in my home who's, who's in, the, in the house, uh, what's the inside temperature, uh, should it turn on the heater and stuff like that. So they're very nice people, and so they allow me to use my data. But my energy provider may not use that data. The data is uploaded to Google's cloud services, and that's it. I can see some of it, but people who can actually do something with my data are not allowed to access it, which is wrong, because it's my data. And if I want to use it, but I can't. Um, and I feel like I'm the customer. This is what I'm told. Um, just the same way uh, pigs in the farm are customers. They are customers, you know, they love the fact that we give them free food and free shelter. Uh, no price to pay for the barn, except they are not, they are not customers. They are the product. They are going to be eaten by the actual customers, the customer being the guy who pays, right? So when you and I uh, buy a sausage, 
we are customers. The pig, which is what we eat, is not the customer. It's the product. And these pigs are exactly us in this cloud computing world. We think we're customers, but we do not pay. And therefore, we are the pigs. We are going to be eaten. Our, our produce, which is not, luckily it's not our meat yet, it's just our data, but our data is being, being eaten by the actual customers, the people who pay, which are the advertisers. So think about that. And by the way, this is under Creative Commons. You can, uh, you can find it easily uh, online. You search in your favorite search engine. You, go, you search for geek and poke uh, pigs, and you find this picture easily. Uh, something changed in uh, June 2013, uh, which were the uh, Edward Snowden's uh, revelations, um, which is that the NSA um, collects, the, basically the uh, US government collects data about pretty much everybody on this planet. And of course, it could be very expensive to spy on everyone, unless that instead of putting microphones in everybody's house, you put four microphones, Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple. That's let's, let's cheaper to use only four microphones instead of two billions or seven billions, right? So spying on the silos is basically delegating the ability and, and, and also leveraging the business model of these large companies that do cloud computing and spy on them in order to spy on all of us. These silos actually make economically feasible to collect data massively. Otherwise, it would not be possible. So I've been thinking uh, since uh, Snowden's revelations what we could do to uh, still be able to use cloud computing because it's very uh, powerful. I mean, I own a smartphone. I own several devices. I want to be able to synchronize uh, them together and without having to use a cable. You know, I want it to be transparent. Um, and so I need to use cloud computing, but I want to use cloud computing, which is under my control. Um, and so I started writing a book, which I published. It's a, I'm sorry, it's in French, but um, it's... Um, 80, probably 85% uh, published on my blog, um, standblog.org, and I came with uh, seven principles to have a, a successful personal cloud computing platform. And after that, I was hired uh, by Cozy Cloud. Um, so I'm going to list these seven uh, principles. The first one is hardware I can control. So we get back to the personal computing part of things. Uh, ideally, so that could be something similar to uh, La Brique Internet that we've seen uh, earlier today, which is basically a small box, as you see. Uh, the price is really inexpensive. Uh, also, we, we have stuff similar to that, which is uh, Raspberry Pi 2, uh, which is really crazily inexpensive. It's like 33 euros, and you get, it's actually a PC. Um, you need to add storage to that uh, and software, but basically you're in business once you have this thing. Um, but hardware itself cannot do anything, right? You need software. Um, and of course, software needs to be uh, free and open source software. Why is that? Because it's, it's transparent. You or someone else who's in the business can analyze audit what's, what the software is doing. If not, you're running a black box and you never know what's doing, what the black box is doing for you. So if you, if you store your data, it must be something running uh, open source software. Uh, because it's transparent and because it can be customized. Otherwise, if it's, if it's proprietary, someone actually has a lot of power over you um, and it, it's called vendor lock-in, right? You're stuck because if you can't leave because they, they've locked you in, basically, because you, you do not have the ability to edit the software, change it to fit your needs. And they will be very happy to sell you 
upgrades. One more minute, so I'll go faster than that then. Um, what was I saying? Anyway, uh, let's uh, move to item number three, which is encryption. Uh, we cannot trust the network, so we need to encrypt uh, data back and forth um, the, uh, uh, the, the system. We also have to say no to targeted advertising, because as it is done today, targeted advertising is the thing that makes people spy on me with my data in order to profile me and, and try to sell me stuff. So that's the sad part about that, is that I have to pay about it. But just to give you an example, the cost of Facebook, running Facebook for one user for one year, is five euros. For the price of two or three coffees, I can I, I could use a, a something similar to Facebook. So if I'm ready to pay a small price, I can use something as powerful as that. So basically, right now we're giving away our data for only five to Facebook with the uh, you know with the terms of services we've seen earlier for only five euros in exchange. That's that's crazy. Um, we need to do some uh, really good user experience, and this, this is a tough one, number five, um, user experience, because many of us are uh, developers, hackers, and, and such, and, and we get used to uh, cryptic interfaces, and we love command line interfaces and such, but if we want this to work, if we want this to be successful, we need it to be very, very easy to use, and this is, we have to be extra careful in, in providing uh, great user experience. Number six is interoperability uh, with the standards. There are several solutions emerging right now um, in the world of uh, personal cloud. We need to make them interoperable. Otherwise, we're doomed. If we compete with each other, well, uh, while we're already trying to compete with Google and Facebook and such, we need solutions to be interoperable. And the good news is um, there is a decentralized sharing working group. There's a session tomorrow morning. Um, I encourage you to participate because this is where, uh, uh, with Michiel, uh, where we work on with Cozy Cloud and Own Cloud and Own, where we try to make it work all together so you can share documents between different systems. And this is a must. Uh, if we want to be successful. And finally, uh, number seven is the notion of killer feature. We need, if, if we want this idea to succeed, we need to find something where, uh, that, that will make people want to migrate to this new system. If not, if we try to do just as good or as bad as Google, with just the notion that we're private, people will not switch to this personal cloud idea. We need to be able, to, we need to provide them with a, a strong uh, feature that may, that will make them want to switch. Um, and, and at Cozy Cloud, the, the thing we're working on for this killer feature is the ability to share data between the various applications that you run on your Cozy Cloud. It could be, uh, and, and I know it sounds obvious because we, we do that already in silos, uh, but in Cozy Cloud we have an email application and we have a contact application. And you can use contacts from the contact application into your email. Sounds obvious because we do that in Gmail already, although I, I hate Gmail. Um, we also uh, do that in uh, the Thunderbird email client, but in Cozy, there are actually separate applications that communicate together. In the future, we'll be able to do something like um, the um, uh, the um, how do you say it? the bill, the monthly bill for your phone, with the listing of all the numbers that you've called, which is pretty useless because you know it's a long list of numbers. Uh, we could mash it up with your address book. So you suddenly know, you realize that this person is the one that you call the most and it costs you a lot because it's actually out of your subscription or things like that. So make it useful by mashing up data from the address book 
and um, an application for uh, the mobile service provider. And, and tons of stuff uh, like that. Energy uh, data, data coming from your Nest system that could be used along with uh, data coming from your energy provider. Because you, it's your data and you do it locally, this you can do what, what Google cannot do. So um, Cozy Cloud is what we do, but there are also uh, several other solutions. Here's a screenshot of the current version. Uh, we're working on a, on a new version that will be released uh, hopefully very soon. Um, your data, your apps, all running on your system, or if you don't want, you can run it on a, on a, on a server, on a hosting, uh, on a hoster. Um, and now the call to action. It's time to get rid of silos. Uh, the first basic first step is to own your domain name. With it, you usually get um, an inbox. That's pretty easy. The tough part is that you have to pay. Um, in France, uh, if you do, if you go to Gandhi.net, that's 12 euros a year with a with an inbox. Uh, I think 10 inboxes uh, with that. So it's it's not too expensive. Uh, you have other solutions such as indie hosters, uh, for example. There are tons of people that are ready to provide uh, similar um, services. Another thing you can do is to try Cozy Cloud. We're looking for uh, beta testers. Uh, so visit cozy.io and you can request um, an instance. So we give you something that, which is valuable because it's service and we pay for it. We pay for it for you. In exchange, we want beta participation uh, bug request, uh, you know, feature request, uh, testing new stuff, maybe localization, be part of a community. And so it's, it's like a, we're trading your time as testers and contributors against uh, a service that we pay for. Um, and if you're a developer and you uh, know JavaScript, uh, writing a, an app for Cozy uh, using Node.js, which is what we run, that would be uh, fantastic. Thank you very much. Yes. Oh, uh, questions. Yes. Quickly, uh, euros on Facebook. But, um, did you factor in the creation of the, the actual platform and the maintenance of it and development of it and the support of it? Well, basically, what I uh, what I did to. Uh, for, for, for the math for this, uh, basically went to uh, uh, the shareholder communication part of their website, and so how many users they had, and how much is it for operating costs and developing stuff, and made, made a basic <laughs> division, that was it. Uh, but yes, that's, that's it. It's, uh, it's, it's scary that with all the investment that they do, and, and R&D, and, and, uh, because we know they have you know, tons of stuff uh, that haven't been shown yet, uh, it's still it's still five uh, euros a year. Yes, I, I, I completely agree. So uh, to be slightly more specific, I would say there are two aspects of things. Um, one is your personal data, uh, like address book and, and email um, and your files, you know, stuff that is really for you, synchronizing, like cloud services synchronization between devices. And this is really uh, what we do at Cozy Cloud. Uh, and then there is a, a completely um, a different side of things, uh, uh, which is the um, let's say social web, which is about um, uh, replacing Twitter, uh, 
uh, publishing stuff that is meant to be uh, visible by pretty much everyone and and so replacing Facebook and you know all the features of a blog and such which is different I think they they, they go together but there was one which is personal and one which is uh, social um, and this we do not focus on that yet uh, at Cozy Yes, and so the, the indie web movement, um, and, and one probably the best example of that is uh, the known piece of software, uh, which is really fantastic. Uh, known does that uh, using uh, standards that have created uh, in the indie web movements, such as Posse and such. Uh, So that's for the social, where the, uh, the, the network effect is really strong. Uh, the indie web approach, such as known, enables you to own your uh, content and replicate it, syndicate it. Uh, to the the big platform, so that you don't lose your audience when you leave these uh, uh, these places. So, so the, this is where the network effect is really important. Uh, on the personal data, uh, the network effect uh, is less important in the sense that it's your address book, which is not shared with anyone. So, if you uh, download a copy of it from Google and upload it on your uh, cozy cloud. You do it once and you're good. I mean, unless there are bugs and you use data, and but we're working on it, so it doesn't happen. But I mean, nobody knows whether you store uh, your address book in Google or on your uh, personal cloud. Once you've migrated, you're good. Nobody will notice. There is no social interaction around it, except if you think about Google Plus, which uh, okay. Uh, let's not get into that debate. Yeah. 
it indicates it's somewhat due to the fact that we have to Any other question? All right.